Hey guys, it's Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk. And today I'm going to film for you my favorite poems and quotes and all that stuff of the month. What do I call this? Favorite quotes of the month? I think this is what I call this or it's favorite poets of the month. I don't know. This is a new thing that I am doing and I'm just going to jump right on into this because I have a couple funny ones. I actually have quite a bit of funny ones and I have a couple melancholy ones, but yeah, I'm just going to go through. I don't have specifically a favorite poet of the month, so it's not going to be all, you know, just Michelle K or just Sierra de Mulder. It's just a lot of everything. My first one, though, doesn't have necessarily an author. It is just a Tumblr post that I have seen going around, and it is just so accurate. I'm gonna read it. Why is it that we are always told not to get tattoos at a young age because we will, quote, regret it later on, when we are basically told to choose a career path by the age 18? I'd rather be 40 years old with a tattoo that meant something to me when I was young than be 40 years old not wanting to get out of bed to go to a job that I hate because I was forced to decide a career in my teens. Hallelujah. And then right along that track, I'm just going to get out my angst because school and me this month have been not getting along. So another college-y kind of post. So I'm sorry if you feel differently than all of these things, but these are my feels of the month. How to get into college in 2013. Get good grades, speak six languages, be a rocket scientist, and world hunger. How to pay for college in 1983. Work part-time and, and some summers. Maybe take out minimal loans. How to pay for college in 2013. Which of your organs is the most valuable? What to do with your degree in 1983? Work in your field. What to do with your degree in 2013? Cry. And now I'm actually gonna talk some poems. Yes, for reals. This one is by Richard Sykin and it is from Wishbone. I'll be your slaughterhouse, your killing floor, your morgue and final resting. Walking around with this bullet left inside me cause I couldn't make you love me and I'm tired of pulling your teeth. I love just the rawness of that. This is another thing that I have just seen on Tumblr and I'm pretty sure I posted on every single social media. And I, I guess a little precursor to this, I am a firm believer in soulmates and not necessarily in the romantic only way. And this was just the perfect summation of what I've tried to convey before and just have not been able to find the right words for that were fitting enough. And this I think explains it pretty damn well. Soulmates, I think they exist, just not always romantically. I think there are certain people you will meet in your life and just connect with them more than anyone else and you just know it isn't a typical thing and you understand each other perfectly. And this person won't always be your quote significant other. I mean it could be your friend or sibling or parent or teacher or the person you're dating or whoever. It could be just about anyone you've ever interacted with. This is hands down by far favorite thing of the past couple months even. I just love this. And it's not from anybody specific. This is just something I've seen on Tumblr. There's like a million different ways to say, I love you. Put your seatbelt on, watch your step, get some rest. You just gotta listen. This is one of my favorite things I have ever read. Um, again, a Tumblr post. I am on there like crazy. If you don't follow my Tumblr, it's the protagonist of my story with little dashes instead of spaces. So you should follow me because I post all of these, not post, but reblog. Someone said, oh my God, so I just figured out the word hurt. It's past, present, and future. You will be hurt, you are hurt, you were hurt. Because if something truly hurt, it never really stops. You poetic little shit. Just because it's an adjective, you will be stupid, you are stupid, you were stupid. Does anyone else feel the thing do you get? Do you understand? No, me, just me, okay. This is from Chuck that was African for that guy. He's the guy who wrote Fight Club. I can't pronounce his name for the life of me. I'm pretty sure this is from Diary, though I don't know for sure, but when I read it, you're gonna understand why I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that it's from Diary. I mean, I just like that 0.1% of bacteria that makes people sick that's left on your hands. I've studied pharmacy too much. I'm sorry. Your handwriting, the way you walk, which china pattern you choose, it's all giving you away. Everything you do shows your hand. Everything is a self-portrait. Everything is a diary. I need to get my hands on that book. This is from the Tumblers. Again, everything's from the Tumblers though. Um, it's by KPK. Anyway, I don't really know anything more than that, but the, it's titled, That Could Have Been Me. Nobody will ever love you as much as an artist can. On your worst days, they will find poetry in the knots of your hair. There are seven billion people on this planet who I have not met. 
and 195 countries I have not visited. Yet I am stuck in this insignificant town, being pressured into making decisions about my future, when I barely even know who I am. That is unknown. Not titled, it's just from unknown. Hello, unknown. Since birth, I have been defined by numbers, inches, feet, pounds, grades, percentages. Does it ever stop? By Michelle Kay. And thank you, I think it was Imani that told me about Michelle Kay, and I looked her up, and I love her, so thank you. I really hope you guys enjoyed this and you should be sure to check out my other video whether it's up first or after this I don't know but it would be up within the day or two of each other uh, my favorites for February and I will see you guys later next time bookworms talk bye